Okay. So next, let's talk about the different kinds of anatomy. Generally, the two types of anatomy, the big categories are microscopic anatomy and gross anatomy. So microscopic anatomy is the study of structures that are too small to be seen without mag magnification. And there's two types of microscopic anatomy. There's cytology and histology. Okay. I'll explain the picture in a bit. Okay, so cytology is the study of cells, and it, it has a C and a C, so it's easy to remember. Cytology, cells. And then histology is the study of tissues. Histology. Um, and what are tissues? Tissues are groups of cells that work together. Okay, so in the anatomy course, we'll generally study histology, right? The study of tissues more than the study of cells. But here I have an example of how cytology might be used in a medical setting versus histology. Okay, so I'm an OB-GYN, so this is going to be an OB-GYN example. So when they're taking a pap smear from a woman, you brush some cells off the surface of her cervix and you look at them and that's called a pap smear. Right? And that gives you a picture under a microscope that looks like this picture. And it looks at loose cells, just cells that have been brushed off the surface of the cervix. This would be like another cell. This would be another cell. They're cells, okay? It's a pretty big magnification compared to this, okay? So in this picture, they're showing that they found some abnormal looking cells that they didn't like. So they had the person come back in and they took a tiny little chunk of tissue called a biopsy from her cervix, okay? And that little chunk of tissue is then sliced up very, very, very thin, thinly so that light will go through it. And it's made into a histology or tissue slide, okay? And the tissue slide has the cells. Now the cells are really small, right? Because we're looking at a whole little chunk of tissue, not at cells. So the cells are really small in this picture, okay? And you're seeing a whole little piece of the cervix from top to you know, somewhat deep, okay? So this is a tissue. that we're looking at here and a bunch of cells that we're looking at here. So cells, cytology, tissue, histology. Okay, and like I said, we'll mostly look at histology. All right, this is just saying what I already said. Okay, so now let's go on to gross anatomy. And really the course will study like 80% gross anatomy and maybe like 20% microscopic histology okay so gross anatomy structures that you can see with the naked eye and then for gross anatomy there's more than one type of gross anatomy and they're all helpful for different things so they might be surface anatomy regional anatomy or systemic anatomy i will explain okay so surface anatomy it's very helpful clinically so surface anatomy that's the study of how Something that you can see on the surface of the person on their skin relates to deeper structures. Very helpful clinically because that's the only way that you can see the person from the outside, right? I mean, I'll show operate or do imaging or something, okay? So a clinician, a phlebotomist, somebody who draws blood, might look at veins under the skin in order to draw blood, okay? And we've all seen people who had really good veins for drawing blood, they're, they're big, fat, bulging veins. And they'd be visible on the surface of the skin. And then the phlebotomist or the nurse or the doctor would stick a needle in and draw blood. That would be surface anatomy used. All right, this is another uh, use of surface anatomy. Sometimes if somebody might have a brain infection, they wanna get fluid from around the spine out of the person. But you have to be really careful when you're getting that kind of a specimen. So they particularly 
use the spaces in the lower back where it's safe. I don't have to go into why. But in any case, they'll do what's called a lumbar puncture, lumbar for lower back. Lumbar and puncture for sticking a needle in. And they'll choose one of the little gaps in the bones to stick the needle in, okay? In this area because it's safest, okay? And how will they do that? Well, they'll look at the hip bones and then they'll count up the processes that you can feel underneath the skin. So that's a use of surface anatomy. Okay, regional anatomy. Now, regional anatomy is what you really see in a person, okay? Um, any part of a person is usually packed with structures. It isn't just one structure. We're packed with structures, okay? So if you were looking inside the abdomen of a person, because you're operating on them, they were sick or something, everything would be packed together. All of the person's small intestines, which are these like, you know, sausage looking little parts over here, um, the edge of the liver over here, um, the large intestine over here. And they're trying to show some blood vessels, some nerves. Everything's in there all packed together. So if you're studying something just by, let's say you want to study the abdomen or the neck or something, you're going to see all sorts of structures in there. Blood vessels, nerves, big organs, little organs. So that's called regional anatomy. However, studying anatomy in this way is very complicated. Very complicated. Isn't it? So what's usually done is that anatomy is sort of teased out into systems, which... Um, by which I mean uh, organ systems, groups of organs that work together. And it's taught that way, okay? Even if it's not the most uh, in real life way to understand it, it at least breaks things down so that you can understand each system one by one, and then you have some hope of putting them together. All right. So that's systemic anatomy, and that's what we'll be using in this course, actually. So developmental anatomy, the study of changes in anatomy from conception to physical maturity, like when you're full grown, 20 or something. Um, and embryology, the study of development from conception to eight weeks. This is when the most remarkable changes occur in people. After eight weeks, you're not an embryo anymore. You're a fetus officially. But during that that period, you go from being just a cell and a cell that meet and combine, as we know, uh, to a little ball of cells, okay, to a little peanut down here, which nonetheless has the features of human. It has a little head, it has little eyes, it has a little arm, little legs, a little belly. Okay, it's recognizably on its way to being a little human. Okay, so that's that developmental anatomy and embryology. Comparative anatomy, that compares humans to other animals. And this is very interesting because evolutionarily, we had a common ancestor. If you go that back, uh, I don't know, millions of years, billions, maybe even, I don't know, maybe not billions. No, millions. Okay. And you see here that humans have a limb with five digits, but surprisingly, so does a whale. Okay, so here we are with our arm, with its hand, five digits, and here is a whale who you would think doesn't need fingers, but he has some kind of like a little flipper and hidden inside are five digits. Like it has like a little floppy hand there. We're not going to go into that, but you know, in this course, but it's cool. I think you'll agree. Okay, 